Greetings and salutations, everybody. It's from a comedy advice podcast. Also, the Joe Rogan podcast is what I listen to sometimes. I've never been on it, never produced. I have applied several times, but no cigar. Nah, and Bill Burr takes them all because, you know, that's what he does. Hey, lady, you know, I could do a little Bill, Bill Burr. It sounds like I would have sex with a small Bill Burr. And I would. If I could learn, if he could just give me one punchline, I would take it. Well, that sounds like he would have sex with me. Who knows? Anyway, I am so excited to announce the special guest of today's episode, Ahmed Al-Qadri. I don't know if I said that sexy enough. So maybe I can... <clears throat> Ahmed Al-Qadri. I don't know if... I... Anyway, Ahmed al Qadri is his name and comedy is his game and he is a wonderful human being he's one of my favorite comedians i'll go ahead and say that he's one of my favorite comedians do i say that every episode no i actually don't because i speak the truth i spit the truth and you guys are catching my truth slobber in your ears and i hope it stays there and i hope that the bacteria accumulates and i hope you go viral but with love and comedy this is this is a good kind of bacteria there's bad and there's good you know probiotics the, these are the good probiotics i spit truth kombucha and i am just, you guys are just soaking up my booch so i'm so happy about that and i hope you guys also get a little sip of ahmed's booch because he is just a a darn treat he's so funny he's so cool and he's so smart and he's just a con we talk about it a content factory and he has had much success on tiktok and he's had much success on instagram and he's also had much success it sounds like english is my second language when i say that he has had much success uh, with stand-up and he's an incredibly talented stand-up comedian and i got to see him front row at the Tempe Improv on a Thursday night when I could have just been in probably my second cycle of REM. But instead, I was in my second laugh from him. And it was fantastic. So I'm super pleased. I'm going to let you guys listen to the episode. Before I do, if you guys have not, please subscribe, leave a review, comment, follow me on Instagram at Satani or a comedy advice podcast. Why? Or and and be great. You know, the, the universe, you, you just have to ask it for what you want. You just have to put it out there and it is abundant in its giving. So I am sick of asking for, or I want you to follow me as Satani and a comedy advice podcast. That's right. Mm. And also and, see, and I can't remember anything else. No. Oh, and see me live trash or treasure. It's a, an amazing new show. I'm on the fourth round of it so this is our fourth show lamar mitchell jr amazing co-host and me and um it's going to be the 14th of december and i'll have a link in the show notes also and follow ahmed he is an amazing person go follow him on instagram twitter oh, sorry not twitter fuck twitter what are you still doing if you're on twitter I'm on Twitter and I don't know what I'm doing. See, I can't answer that question. TikTok is what I meant to say. And I'll have a link in the show notes for all that good stuff. So get, be, a, be a special guest, okay? Be a good listener and just tell them, hey, Ahmed, loved the episode. You were a shining gem of a person and loved you more than Stefan. That's okay. You can say it. I did too. I'm going to DM him the same thing. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys and I'm going to leave you well, I'll, I'll never leave you, but I'm going to drop you off at this episode and I'll be back around eight or so. So, all right, bye. My friend, Steven, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing so well. How are you, Ahmed? Good, doing well, doing well. Wait, let me make sure the lighting is good. No, I'll keep the light on. Hopefully it's not too hot because we're recording in progress. You want to you want to look nice, you know? Well, I don't know how much light can help you. No, I'm kidding. You look <laughs> like you look like an angel. You yeah, stop. <laughs> stop.
Well, I do feel blessed. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, if we're going to turn the tables here, I just got a view of myself and I am regretting every choice that I've made today. Uh, oh, you look great. I look like a pie. I look like Long John Starbucks. It looks so <laughs> bad. I don't know what I did today. But, I think it, um, the AirPods is what made it Starbucks, you know? That's exactly. Yeah. I'll <laughs> Oh really man, but but thank you. I think I might. I think I might just wind down, undo. Well, there well, we go. You went that from looks... you went from rock climber to uh, sword owner. <laughs> that sounded like an invitation for me to show you all of my sword collection. Really? Got the whole trilogy from Lord of the Rings. I've got. <laughs> Why am I no, not I surprised? It's okay. I haven't. I haven't. If you, I don't know if this is a like. If anyone can see it, but I have a dagger in the back. That's a, it's a Yemeni dagger. It's called a jembia, and you wear it for like certain uh, muggings for weddings. Yeah, weddings or certain events or Fridays. You know, people usually wear it on Fridays if you're in Yemen. <laughs> I, oh, I was saying muggings, but weddings, I think, could be pretty cool for it. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, muggings. Yeah, muggings is a good, you know, occasion. Uh, how about this? Hang on. Let me try this. Yeah, so basically, yeah, this is one of those, like... Wait, hang on. Let me check. I like this. This is, this is a good... This is a good... Uh, this is a good view. This, oh. Yeah, no, I, 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 I watched, I listened to a couple of previous episodes, you know, I'm looking forward to this uh, podcast and yeah, this is going to be fun. Oh my gosh. Well, Hey, I am honored. I, now I know where those five downloads came from. That is so <laughs> good. What, did you listen to one with Ryan? Did you listen? Which one's I listened to one with one? Ryan and a little bit of Mark Norman. Oh, okay. That was that was a comedy. That was great. Yeah. That was a fun yeah. one. Mark Norman we, is we great. Got, he's so fun. And he actually we did that one in person versus the Zoomies. So that was really cool. Yeah. Nice. He also, what I like about Mark Norman is he's like he's he loves talking about comedy. He loves it. And he loves like no matter what podcast you are, he will be there and he will talk to you and about comedy. Like he's a big fan. He's so big of a fan and he also, he just, he uses it so intelligently. Like he'll use it as an open mic of sorts. So he'll have and test jokes on there. I went to go see him live at the Tempe Improv where I saw you and, and Ryan Kelly. And he was using some of the stuff that he had tested. And I'm like, this is brilliant. You don't even have to, oh, well, I'm sure open mics are very important as well, but he's just on these pods and he's getting exposure and he's testing out his jokes. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you it is it is good to test your jokes everywhere you can. I mean, like back, like even now, I'm at the I'm at the point where I'll test a joke. Like if it's if I'm on a show, I I will like you know obviously open with really good material, and then I'll have a like a couple of jokes that I want to work on, you know, or just brand new jokes. So I did that actually at Flappers last Thursday had a couple new jokes and then some of them hit one did not hit uh <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but, but but at the same time it's like you already earned their trust in the beginning that you're funny and at the, and at the same time like i i was able to recover and i know what i'm doing yes 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 that totally makes sense because you've built up their trust like you said they're already in the laugh zone they fall out of it a little bit and then, uh, yeah, you get in there. Sorry, that, was I boring you with my? No, 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 no. I'm just no. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen. Your insecurities are showing. <laughs> oh no! Oh man! You know what? I knew that oh, this shirt really makes them pop. It's yeah. just the the eyes and the insecurities. But you know, uh, we've already. I mean, this was not just a cold open. This was a hot, steamy open, and I. I'm so I might as well introduce you at this point if people just blindly clicked on the episode and <laughs> yeah. they, didn't, they didn't realize who it was. But um I, I'm Stefan Satani, by the way. I didn't know if it was too far to tell you I'm Stefan and not Steven, but um that's the name. My Podcast bad. is the game. I oh, I I totally flubbed your name because uh, you know, I suck at reading and <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> oh yeah, 
It is Stefan. I told you. Yeah. And then when I met you at the improv, you said Stefan. And then oh, I think I said hey. Stephen. And then I gave you multiple stickers. You gave me so many stickers. I've got some downstairs, actually. I was going to have yes. one and show it with pride. But I my memory is bad, too. But you did not mess up. Your reading is not bad because the way that it's spelled is phonetically ambiguous. So it could go either way. It's a Stephen Stefan scenario. So yeah, you no, get, do you get Stephen a lot? Oh, so many times. Oh, so yeah. many times. Yeah. yeah. See, I get so, uh, when I when I introduce myself, I, I say Ahmed. But people hear I'm Ed. So they call me Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've also, I've heard you on a slew of podcasts and I've also heard, cause I've, uh, you're, you're American, but origins from Yemen. Right. And I've heard some folks pronounce it Ahmed. Yeah, is that the Ahmed. proper? Yeah. Okay. Ahmed. Yeah. That is the way. Yeah. That is the proper way to say it. Ahmed al Qadri. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. We find out the listeners were like, can you please just let out the, the whole name? And we did it. Uh, Ahmed Al Qadri. <laughs> Ahmed Al Qadri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you had a little bit of ha in there, but just try to open your throat. Say Ahmed. Ahmed. There you Ahmed. go. Oh, man. This is... Yeah. You see, Arabic, Arabic is from the throat. So, like, like our ABC so is Alif, Ba, Ta. It's all from here. Wow. Elif. Elif. Ba. Ta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dang, man. That's so, you know, I used to work at Rosetta Stone. So I learned Italian by living in Italy and going to school for it. Portuguese through Rosetta Stone. But I did learn. Well, here's the problem. I did Rosetta Stone a little bit of Arabic, but... One of my friends who studied abroad in Jordan, he told me that there are different dialects of Arabic and the Arabic that is taught in Rosetta Stone is like the Arabic that you might see on the news, perhaps, but it's also, um, it's, I, it's I don't know how to relate it. It's called Arabi Fusha and it's like old, it's like old original Arabic. Oh, damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's like, um. Like it's like someone going to be like, oh, uh, like, like giving you like the proper English. You know what I mean? Like I want to say, oh, uh, good day, chap. Yeah, Greetings. yeah, 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 something like that, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a different because yeah, every country has a different slang, but I still think it's good to just learn that Arabic because it's a good baseline, you know. So if you're talking to a Lebanese or a Yemeni, we'll still understand you. We'll just be like, oh, he's speaking like proper Arabic, you know what I mean? Like very uh, old, proper Arabic, but, like, you know, we'll still understand it, you. Interesting. Like using vows and thines, where yeah. art thou, all that. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. The, I don't remember too many of the words. The only one that really sticks out right now is marhaban. Is yeah, that marhaban is very, yeah, it's a very, uh, in the Arab world, very universal. Like very, uh, marhaba. Yeah, it, it is like everyone will know what you're saying. You know, like Yemenis, Lebanese, Moroccan, any. If you say marhaba, but we're all gonna think, oh, this dude's learning Arabic. You know, but if you say like a, like a Yemeni, we'd be like kifhalak. You know, or or oh. uh, an Egyptian would be like azayak. Or Lebanese or, you know, Shami would say like Shlonak, you know, so it's like every, every different, you know, or. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. So, so Arabic is a very old language. I remember seeing like the language the, for, for an English speaker, the hardest languages to learn was, I believe, Japanese, Cantonese and Arabic. Yes. Yes. Because Japanese and Chinese, I think it's very uh, sound based. So, yeah, and then yeah, and then nice. um, yeah. Chinese are Mandarin and Cantonese. They're tonal. There's a symbol for each word instead mm. of uh, a, a sound. And right. I think j with Japanese, it's syllables, but still very similar concept yeah. and completely different different alphabet or whatever you would even call it writing and then the next one down is the the 
Russian and Slavic languages like Croatian, Serbian. Yeah, yeah. I Russian culture fascinates me, man. I want to go to Russia once. Uh, once I'll probably go to who knows maybe I go there I love it so much I move there <laughs> I become a comedian <laughs> in Russia <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a Yemeni American comedian based in Russia <laughs> well what a way to turn Yemen's into Yemen <laughs> and that's just beautiful and also I, I wanted to shine the light back on you just for a quick second to talk about the amazing job that you did at the Tempe Improv last month with Ryan Kelly. Oh boy. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect. And when you came on stage, just right from the start, man, your first opening joke talking about driving and uh what was it the turning and the 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 body language, everything, it was just it was just ripe for a juicy laugh. You want to hear something yeah. funny? That that was the first time I, I wrote that joke on my way to Arizona. I was literally driving and then I go to Ryan and I say, dude, the weirdest thing happened to me. I'm driving and then a motorcycle runs past me and I go, oh, instead of turning the wheel. <laughs> he starts laughing. And then I go, you know what? I'm going to open with that joke. He's like, try it. Let's see how it works. So I went up on stage. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a hot crowd. And I was like, let me try some new jokes tonight. And I did. <laughs> You know what? Good for you. And I feel I had heard you on another podcast too talking about it where you had either gone on tour with or just have experience sharing the stage with older comedians where yeah. they might be doing the same sets over and over and over again. And what I really liked here talking with Ryan and now talking with you and hearing you on other podcasts saying, you know, I'm trying out new stuff all the time. I'm feeling out the crowd. I even heard you say it audibly when you were performing at the Tempe Improv and you were saying, oh, good crowd, good crowd. You're going to like this one. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> going off. It's like you got this little Ahmed map and you're just <laughs> going and you're saying, okay, things are turning good. We're going to go right on this one. And we yeah. loved it. We ate it yeah. up. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I did. I, yeah, very intuitive. Yeah, that's exactly how it was like when I got up on stage because I was like, if I, if like, there are certain jokes that I have as my openers that I know, like, okay. Like, for example, I have a joke where I go like the, what I heard. I have my opener. I say, I know I look like a Daisy, but I'm actually Arab. Sorry. I know I look like the Seven Eleven type Brown, but I'm actually the 911. People start laughing. I know I look like the, uh, duh, 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 but I'm actually, uh, and then it just blew, like it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> pun intended <laughs> but, but, which is funny is like that joke it, it, it hit and that's when i said arizona you guys are awesome this is gonna because based on that i know how the rest of my other jokes are gonna go like the cue for a brown guy those middle east ones at the end or like the other or you know uh, which is funny enough is my 7-Eleven, 9-Eleven joke. It's like a trend on TikTok now. And I'm like, oh, God, because people are tagging me on these videos and they're getting more views than me. And I was just like, Dude, now it sucks because I was like, I'm going to go on stage and say these jokes. And now people are like, oh, this dude stole it from TikTok. I'm like, no, this is my joke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. the, yeah, the that's irony. A, that's the shitty thing about social media. It's like, yeah, you post a joke and it does really well. But then at the same time, like, now you have little high school kids or I don't know, this 19 year old like a girl just posted, you know, did the joke with a sound. And then now it's it's getting way more views than my own video. <laughs> <laughs> this video like, hey, this is totally your joke. She's stealing your joke. But at the same time, it's like that's what I hate about TikTok. It's like you post it and it's like, oh, that means I can take that. Like, you know, people could take the audio and make more views out of your stuff. You know, but it's, you know, it's pretty interesting how it works like that. And especially on this one where I've seen it in on TikTok and other platforms where people just take the audio file of a lot of stand up comedians. And the ones where I see where I'm like, OK, that can work is when they're just acting something out. I'm like, OK, you're adding a little flavor to it. But if somebody's just sitting there or laying there on their in their bed, just saying it with a little sassy attitude. And they're getting it. People might think, hey, this is this person saying this. And they're going to absorb the 
the authority on, oh yeah, or the originality and people are going to think they're the person, which is very interesting to me. Yeah. And, and they're just mouthing the words as someone who else who said it. I mean, I'm at the point where like, at first I was like, oh man, like this is how TikTok is. Like I get it. Cause this has happened to me yeah. multiple times where like someone will take a video of mine and post it on their content page and then they get all their views and money. And I'm like, and they don't even tag me. And it sucks. But at the same time, it's like, I'm a creator. I'm a creative person. I'm a comedian. I will always write more jokes. You know, I will always write. Yes. Like if someone were to like, let's say like if someone were to just take all my jokes right now, I'd be like, ah, I'd be bummed out. But I'm like, well, the experience, he can't take away my writing, my experience. He can't take away my knowledge of writing a joke. So I'll, I'll just write new jokes, you know, <laughs> I'll just write new material. And, and that's one of the things that uh, makes me, that makes you uh, shine bright in my mind and heart and perhaps lungs, you know, the whole organs. And I feel like you are just a content factory. You just keep on producing. I mean, if you were a real factory, people would be dying in there, like working way <laughs> over time. But Amazon I, workers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'd have to shit yeah. themselves. It's like, oh man, the Ahmed content factory is just too much. <laughs> we need 12 more TikToks by noon. Come on, let's get them pumping. Right, right. I, but, I try to keep it daily. Yeah. That's and And it's incredible. And I heard you talking about it too, where you were you're pumping stuff out it seems like tiktok seems to be your sandbox where you are just playing around and and seeing what sticks and then if you see something resonates with people then you'll transfer it over to instagram and then it right. tends to blow up there as well which is i think a very the first off if we could just still revel in the fact that you're producing so much content and going out there and putting trust in your brain and the stuff that you're writing. And I feel like you're being a little vulnerable, you know, because I've heard yeah. you say it in another podcast too, where you're like, it's it's one of the things that I have to do to be able to get stage time and go up yeah. on stage. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the thing about comedy now, or just being a stand-up comedian back then, it's like you write jokes and then hopefully you blow up for doing those jokes and then you get that Johnny Carson late night and then voila, you're a famous stand-up comedian, you know? And then if you're even more famous, you're like, you know, and then the next phase was like, you do stand, uh, you do acting in, in a sitcom, you know, like in the nineties, like, like Ray Romano, you had in and you had that sitcom, yeah. you know, he, there's so many other examples. And then, and then the next phase was like, you know, you had to do acting commercials and everything so you could become famous to build your name. And then now it's like you have, you have to not only do that, but you also have to be a social media guy because everyone now, everyone asks like, oh, you know, like, oh, can we, oh, you're a comedian. Oh, yeah. What's your TikTok? What's your Instagram handle? Everyone wants to see that. And then now. Like because I have a following, it helps me get booked on more shows, but it did help that I was, a, I was first like going to open mics, going into the trenches. I didn't have the clout. I had a little bit of a following, but not, nobody knew me, you know, mm -hmm. but it was good because when I went to New York in September, people would book me on their shows and then I would do great on those shows. And then you'd have a booker. It doesn't happen a lot now, but like a booker would be like, dude, I thought you were just some like TikTok. I thought you were just some influencer, but you crush it. You're like, dude, you're hilarious. And I was like, yeah, because I've been doing comedy stand up for a long, long time. Like, again, I met Ryan September of 20. I'm, I moved here September of 2018. I met Ryan September of 2018. I met him at a Flappers <laughs> open mic. He was the host. You know, we were at a, it was at a bar of the comedy. Club. It wasn't even in the room. It was a bar of the comedy club. And he oh was hosting God. that because they would pay him food. And I would go to that mic because it was close. He came friends from there. No one knew us. And then, mm -hmm. you know, but it's good to establish. I think, I think it's good to establish yourself as a really good stand-up comedian, knowing who you are, knowing, you know, knowing how you write your own jokes through your own lens. 
So to the point where you go to Tempe Improv, you're so relaxed because it's like, listen, I've been doing this for years. You know, I have a strong act. I'm funny. And I'm going to be I'm going to have fun with this room, you know. Oh, and I remember point, and I remember messing with you because I was seeing your shirt. And then I was like, because I was like, oh, this guy gets me. And I go, I like your shirt so tight. And then I, it's as tight as mine. And I was like, it's as tight as this relationship. Oh, no, now we're friends doing a pod. Doing, now I'm doing your podcast. That Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, you pounded me on stage, which was super... <laughs> I tried to pound it you on stage. Hell yeah, I pounded you on stage. And you took it. You took it like a man. My wife was staring at me. It was like, are you sure you want this? I was like, I've never wanted anything more in my life. Yeah, she so, was a she was cuck holding, not pounding, that's for sure. <laughs> so but but it was it was everything you said, so true. And I have seen this time and time again, where my first preconception of somebody that got fame or or got more recognition because of their online presence, maybe this was two or three years ago, you'd see somebody and it was an Instagram, it wasn't necessarily on TikTok. And you'd say, okay, this guy's an Instagram star, YouTube star, and then they'd go up on stage and bomb. But you took the route. I mean, we're going back to the Ahmed map, where you were like, we're gonna start here, comedy stand up and i know you did improv too before yes um, i was and- yes so before stand up I, I did improv and sketch so i started i think yeah from the previous podcast like i started at dallas comedy house i was like 21 22 years old i i just loved comedy i first told myself to get my degree first then pursue and then pursue comedy so i had an accounting degree then um fair followed my dreams. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I, I really just, uh, I remember, I still remember this because I was doing, um, I used to post content just like on my own. Like I used to do m- these videos called Monday motivations. If you, if oh. you scroll deep in my Instagram, you could find those videos, but I, every Monday I would post Monday motivational videos. And there were comedy videos. I would just do backwards advice. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when I was doing that, Ryan used to do story times, but no one gave it, but the algorithm never gave it. It was shit. But oh, no. I was just, I was doing Monday motivations. And then years ago, back when I did improv and sketch, I used to do fast food Fridays. And I would, it was a picture of me at a fast food restaurant. And I would do a funny caption about that restaurant. And, uh, and yeah, if you, to the listeners out there, if you scroll real deep in my page, you can find those, you know, you can see a young Ahmed. Just, but I was just doing it because I did fast food Fridays to just like, it just, it was, to me, it was fun. And, mm-hmm. and it helped me become a better joke writer, honestly, of just getting to the punchline. How uh, much weight did you gain after doing fast food Fridays? <laughs> Dude, uh, I work out a lot, man. I work out a lot. I, oh, I like, can tell. I mean, let's let's not denigrate that fact. Oh, the guns. Oh, man. Who needs got, that got, sword got, with those guns you, over there? The tip outs. The tip outs. God, see, I'm so... You've got... Oh, man. All right. Well, whew, getting, getting a little hot in here. This is... Uh, man, it's uh, I'm so yeah. jealous, but... So, like, right anyway. now, my regimen is... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in the mornings, I do a body weight workout. Okay. Which involves about 200, uh, 280 squats. So 70, squ- 70 squats, push ups, planks, sit ups. Uh, what else? Uh, and then high knees, and then squats again, push ups. Like I do like this body weight regimen workout and then in the afternoons of monday wednesday friday i do weightlifting. so like today i did my body weight and then later i did chest and tribe because i have a gym downstairs mm. and then uh tuesdays thursdays i do boxing um saturday Damn. yeah saturdays if my group if if we're playing ultimate frisbee i'll play ultimate frisbee with my friends but if we're not doing that i usually just do leg day or I Saturdays, whatever is whatever. Honestly, it's whatever I'm feeling. I'll go rollerblade in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then Sundays. Okay, I, that was so, day. by the way, it, it was just like badass shit, badass shit, <laughs> badass shit. And then Sundays I'll rollerblade in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Rollerblading's <laughs> fun, dude. <laughs> I, oh, oh. Ultimate frisbee or rollerblading, okay? And then Sunday, okay. I, I, I need to. I haven't been stretching. I'm gonna start. I found a yoga studio next to my apartment. I'm gonna start going there again. I, I need to start going to yoga because I tried doing yoga on like. I don't know. For yoga, I have to go to a class. I can't. That's the one thing I just can't be as disciplined on. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. I work out a lot. I, I mean, even a part of my opening act was I was talking about I started working out when I was 15, 15 years old. All it's ever gotten me was compliments from other guys who work out. And then, like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's like pretty much how I filter all my jokes. It's like every joke comes from like, an experience or just something about me and just mm-hmm. so you can get to know who I am as a person. Cause when you first see me on stage, it's like, you see this like buff guy with a, with a, with a like a nice tight t-shirt. Look, pecs are looking yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I probably think, yo, this guy's a douchebag, you know, but then I'm like, nah, man, I'm a sweetheart. I rollerblade on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> i do the body weights and, and uh lift the uh, weights but i also rollerblade on sundays that's yeah my... and i watch anime like come on <laughs> oh nice that's very true yeah i remember we talked about that or, or there was somebody next to us in line we were this talking is about... this is one thing um besides how amazing you are which i don't mean that sounded very sarcastic yes. but i did not mean that sarcastically <laughs> yeah but yeah you both you and Ryan, I felt like did stellar performances. And I mean, I usually bring on comedians that are touring that headline at the Tempe Improv or House of Comedy or wherever in Phoenix. And then I go see them. And I have two things to say. I feel like you guys are a completely different type of comedy where you guys, like you said, I can kind of see the dynamics of it. It's not so Ra- your your jokes aren't so wrapped in plastic. It's like this action figure that you pull out and play with. You're, you've got so many different tools at your disposal. So ma- so many different j- jujabis. Is that the dagger? Uh, jambias. Fuck. Okay. No, 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 no. I love that. I like so many different jambias. I like that. So That's many. I tried was- to take a stab at it, but I fucked hey, up. So you took a stab was- at it <laughs> <laughs> with the dagger. I love that. Love it. We love puns oh, here. We love puns of oh, the yes. all, so all the all Kadri, Ryan Kelly all Kadri. So I we say all Kelly household. You know? Oh damn! Oh well, I love that. You guys <laughs> more coveted than the Gryffindor household, I would say. Yes, would yes, it that. is the all Kelly household. You know, we're we're chill guys. We just love. But I really appreciate that, man, because like that is the time. I mean, like I I really feel like. Um, Ryan and I are like, we're part of this new class, this new generation of comics, you know, like, especially because we have to do content creating and we have to do that. We, we learn our way through it. You know, I mean, even me, like, I'm still trying to figure out this TikTok thing, you know, like even Ryan, if I ask him, he'd be like, I'm still trying to figure this out. Like it's, it's really just like, like, this is how I produce or just, comedy or how I produce content or just being creative is like a thought comes into my head, like a premise and I go, or, or an observation or something. And I go, huh, oh, this is funny. How do I write? So first I was like, let me try to write this as a stand-up joke. Ah, it doesn't really work as a stand-up. Let me try to write as a sketch. Uh, maybe, Oh, okay. It does work a little bit better as a sketch. Okay. Let me shrink it down. Oh, it works better as a, con- like a little piece of content. But like, um, and some sketches that I wrote in the past, I turned it into pieces of content or little pieces of content. I went from a stand-up joke or vice versa. So um, like I, a lot of people like will enjoy my content and then they go see me live, but they enjoy my stand-up way more. And I appreciate that because <laughs> I'm like, like what, like what I just said earlier, it's like TikTok, I'm just throwing shit. I'm just throwing whatever at TikTok. I'm like, uh, does this work? 
uh, what about this? Like, that's literally how I'm shooting, like how, what I'm doing with TikTok. Um, it's, I, I get it, man. And it's so cool. How, uh, one golden nugget from the deep mine of Ahmed is, <laughs> is being able to repurpose stuff. And I, that's something that I've started to do as well, not as successfully as you, but I've started to write things down, whether it's premises or different ideas. And I think, okay, can I, uh, sometimes it's in, in my sandbox, I'll post it on Facebook or I'll post it on, uh, I've started doing TikTok more. And then I think, okay, can this be a video? Can this be a sketch? Can it be uh, a stand up bit? Can it be mm -hmm. a segment on the podcast? Whatever. <clears throat> and oh, so that's great it's, idea. it's so cool. It's just my, I think it reminds me of my, my nonna, my grandma, where she'd take the pasta dough. And she'd say, should this be a spaghetti tonight or gnocchi or whatever? And she just makes the beautiful dish. She'd probably be rolling over in her grave if she's hearing her grandson <laughs> compare comedy bits on TikTok to beautiful oh. pasta al bolognese. But that's just, that's how I- I love roll. that. No, but that's a great analogy. Like, honestly, I might use this analogy in the future. I'm like, oh, that is what please. it is of like, Oh, thank you. I'm taking it. No, but you are right. It's like, um, let me think. Like uh, the ch uh, one of my latest viral videos, the children of immigrants PTSD. Have you seen those videos? Love, dude. Like beautiful. I, I have to say, be as a child. So I hung out with a lot of children of immigrants from Mexico. My wife is Brazilian. And I felt like it related at a 360 view on so many different countries. So, but sorry, go on, go on. No, 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 no. I love, I, it, it, it genuinely makes me happy when people go to this video speaks to me and it makes, it, it feels so good. Like it, it makes my day. Uh, because like I, I first, I, I, I genuinely tried it on stage and it wasn't getting the luck. It was getting, uh, I get it, but I'm like, it needs, it needs like, props it needs like it needs visuals and it needs like a better act out and i was like i could do it better in my living room and i could have my white roommate like coming up to me <laughs> and be like hey is this your sandal I'm like ah like you know it's just like what i um, i mean the best way to do it like for my style of videos i'm like okay what's the best way to like take like, what am I trying to say with the fewest amount of wor words and then just do it as fast and quick as possible? And they and they they all did great. And it makes it really makes me feel good. And then it sucks because they're like, oh, yeah, I have this streak of viral videos. You're like, next videos are going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> but to any oh. like, but to any anyone listening, if you're a content creator or just yeah you're trying to like you know you're new to tiktok or just new to creating content just yeah just don't be afraid just keep trying consistency is key people don't remember like people like the ones that really speaks to them that's what you will be remembered for you know they're not you're not going to be remembered for the videos that didn't make them laugh they're going to, they're going to remember you for the ones that made them laugh and what, how they made them feel, you know, like when people go up to me, because in the end, like people come up to me, like, I love your videos. Oh, which, and they would tell me which one's their favorite. Everyone has a different favorite video. You know, some people say roommates with anxiety is my favorite. Some people say, you know, the, you know, the children, immigrant parents or or other like uh what's another one? Oh, some people no. <laughs> this girl came up to me she goes the one where i act like animals i go this is my impression of an animal and then i just do it in front of i just it's just basically the premise it's just me annoying my roommate that's what it is it's like this is my impression of this animal like like i'm posting this tomorrow i'm gonna say this on tiktok this is my impression of a rhino and i just tackled ryan <laughs> like, like the the premise is just me bothering my roommate like that's what it is I, and i love the ones i also love the ones where you have your friends and you say you know guys you got to stop calling ben an asshole you know, <laughs> yeah. just yeah, four hour hurts. naps yeah yeah like let's stop saying ben is lazy or let's say <laughs> let's stop saying jennings is a douchebag or let's stop saying this certain and it's like 
You're just like, what? Who's saying that? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh so good. And I just, it, it, I, I think you had some, well, we talked about some gold. I think I've also found some pearls in this deep oh, hole yes. of Ahmed. <laughs> and it's just, wear them around my neck. Oh, so, oh pretty but right. another thing that you said is just be try and be consistent don't be afraid if we're gonna go roll into the rollerblade metaphor it's just if you try to go on the rollerblades you're not gonna go far but if you relax and just don't be afraid you're gonna glide and you're just gonna go. go and you can yes i love that i love that like i had a friend of mine he uh he like he posted on instagram he posted a video it went viral right and I told him, yeah. get on it. Like keep posting every day. Don't be, af but he just got in so much in his head. He lost that spark. He lost that momentum. And, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's because you get in your own head. Even me, I get in my own head too. But like, but because I've been doing that, I started, listen, listen, I'm very new to TikTok. I started TikTok December of, like, I started really getting into TikTok December of 2020. I, I created a TikTok and like account in like 2019, didn't even uh -huh. touch it. You know, I was just like, this is, I was like, oh, I, whatever, you know? But I started yeah, like yeah. getting on it December of 2020 because Ryan moved in and he was like, you're funny, get on TikTok. Like you basically put me <laughs> in a headlock. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but then I was telling him, I go, I have this old uh, sketch uh, that I wrote back in my DCH days back in Dallas uh -huh. days when I just did, you know, sketch. and I was like, I wrote this old sketch where I'm in a rush, but I need to pray. And then my, my roommate is reminding me of prayer. And then he was like, yeah, sure. So we put that. And that was like my first viral video on TikTok. It blew up. I was like, <laughs> it was on Reddit. People are sending me videos like, is this you? Like all that. You, and you're like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then next thing you know, you just start, I was like, all right, time to just, be consistent. Just keep posting. Talk um, about living on a prayer. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen <laughs> killing it, dude. <laughs> oh, that song's oh. gonna be stuck in my head now. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it, it's so cool to see, and it's inspiring to see as well, because because of you guys, one other thing I just wanted to say, then yeah. we can go into the advice portion of the podcast, where yeah, we can answer some questions from yeah. Reddit and et cetera. But you guys, different type of comedy. I love the approach you guys take to creating content. Cause you're just, you're just out there, you're doing it, you're being consistent. And I feel like it's flexing another muscle that's just making those guns. Oh, so more explosive. I mean, right now I've it's the stand, the bicep is the stand up muscle, but my tries, the TikTok muscle is yeah. just not there. And so yeah. <laughs> my wife is like, can you be better? Can you be like Ahmed? And I'm like, <laughs> Start I'm doing some dips, homie. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm, tr I'm trying to dip into TikTok, but I'm talk blocking myself and I'm just so afraid and it's so tough, but hey, you're good. Man, you are killing it with these puns, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's my I love it. Uh, I love it. No, I, I'm a big fan. Big fan. <laughs> Thank you. I uh Thank you. where but, yeah. Uh no, no, no. I, I love oh, that. I, go go. I ahead. was gonna I was just gonna say, I'm so sorry, but the the different kind of comedy that you guys are creating, the other thing that was so cool was to see the type of audience that you guys had because your audience was one of the nicest one of the the chillest, the coolest people that I've seen in a comedy club. They're and so was, sweet. And, and we we were, I, after the show, everyone was waiting to talk to um, Ryan to talk. They were talking with you and you guys were just waiting there and you were passing out stickers. And everyone was, I was talking with the people on both sides of me and um, they were saying cool things like, oh man, it was so cool. I love Ryan and blah, blah, blah. And I loved Ahmed. And when I saw that they were roommates, I was like, oh my God. And they were all freaking out and we were connecting over all these little things. And I was thinking, man, if I was in line to see, I don't know, Mark Norman or another comedian, no offense to any of them. They're fantastic comedians, but their crowds are typical comedy crowds where they're just, okay, don't talk to me. 
and blah blah, blah. <laughs> or, or, or like that, that's... i don't know if i should talk yeah what was so cool about that show yeah. where like our fans were just so nice and they were just so sweet like they like one fan brought me a a, a french like bread because ahmed loves bread and like people were bringing <laughs> me bread someone brought me a bread keychain uh, i can't find my keys but Someone That's brought me, oh, this one was my favorite. Like, so my real hardcore fans know I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. So he brought me a notebook. Oh, man. I was, I was, uh, my heart was so full that night. Like, it was really one of the happiest nights of my life. Because it was just like, it all started with Ryan moving in. Because I, I, I posted on my story like, hey, I'm looking for a roommate. Ryan messages me. We start talking. He comes, you know, back from Missouri to move in with me. And he's literally like, hey, are you down to shoot TikToks? I was like, dude, you know what? I am down to shoot TikToks. And yeah, just lo and behold, like we just, everything just started like piling through. And it's like, it's a surreal feeling of all your hard work that you've been doing from, you know, going to flappers and doing these open mics, just trying to figure out who you are as a comedian on stage. I mean, I'm still trying to figure that out, but you, you know, you kind of know who you are, but all this hard work is just paying off to where you get on stage, you crush it. Everyone loves you. And then next thing you know, people are in line taking pictures with with you and they love like the things that you're, put it out there it, it, it it's a great feeling it's surreal because another moment like another milestone yeah, yeah. was this past sunday yes. oh, i was killing a bug uh this past sunday i did my first hour in dallas at dallas Com- at dallas comedy club it used to be dallas comedy house but it's now dallas comedy club uh, I did my first hour and it was a lot of people who were in the audience were people who saw me years ago back when I was like in Dallas, you know, working my stuff out and they were just like, dude, you are beyond like light years better. And it's like, yeah, because I've been to LA working hard, getting on stage almost every day, and just writing new jokes and being so comfortable on stage. Um, oh, so, it's, a, it's a great so, feeling because it, it, you really, you look back on all the, the hardships and all the, t- the tough times and you're like, dang, I went through it. Cause you're just focusing on the good. You're just focusing on it's like, I went on stage, I did well. Like and it's like, I I I, you know, I have a job. I, I still work as an accountant, but I'm getting my bills right, paid. Right. Yes. <laughs> I know nice. I have a roof over, over my head. I mean, but I mean, I will save this advice and the advice section I or, or portion of the podcast, I'll mention sure the main advice to younger comics. Oh no! We're the advice section we're gonna get into is just horrible advice from silly questions. Okay, okay. Let, let me just say this good advice. So, um, serve it up now, yeah. Yeah, serve I'll it serve now. it up. Yeah, I'll serve it like a like a pizza of mozzarella pasta. I don't know. I tried. I tried. Oh, mwah, mwah. <laughs> mwah, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess like the, yeah, like what I was saying, like my main piece of advice for younger comics is like, and, it, and it's even. I mean, I'm still doing it. Is Think of your Myers hierarchy of needs. You know, have you heard of that that pyramid? And Myers, the Myers hierarchy of meat. Is that what you said? Of needs. Oh, I, oh okay, okay. Maslow's. Reason, Maslow's. I, you were going I said Myers Briggs. My, I always mix up Maslow's and Myers. No, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. No, but, no, no. Please. But Don't I'm saying, like, I think. I mean, I, I, I thought about this like pyramid or whatever or that i brought it up because a lot of comedians or artists they come here and they think and they think like oh they're gonna go to auditions they're gonna get their big break and they'll be financially set but it's like you cannot you can't bake on such a small outcome you know that like the possibilities of that happening is very slim i mean yeah they think about like that like Charlize Theron, she was found at a bank, but it's like, also, you're not Charlize Theron, you're not in the 90s, and you're not as hot as she is, or as beautiful <laughs> as she is, you know, if you're as beautiful as Charlize Theron, yeah, I think you're fine, all right, in life. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it, but like I said, like, I knew I wanted to be a comedian, I did my first open mic when I was 18, terrible, but <laughs> I, <laughs> it was like an open mic, it was more for slam poetry, it was at UTD, but 
what I'm saying is I got my degree, got a good job, and then I pursued comedy. And then I, you know, when I was 25, I moved to LA and I had somewhat of a foundation. But what I'm saying is I was working as an accountant and I was pursuing comedy. That's what I was doing. A lot of the comedians around that time, uh, before the pandemic, they were just roughing it out. When, were, were when people of? ask, wait, a question, when yeah, people yeah, ask ahead. you if if you want comedy to be your full-time job, you say, <sighs> yes, I'm accounting on it. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> that's going to be the last one of that. the night because no. I almost vomited Keep it going. on myself. Keep it going, buddy. <laughs> I love that. We love it. Bravo, bravo. Oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway. So. Basically, uh, <laughs> some other communities, they had like waiter jobs or think like like things that. that We're it just was, getting them by paying the bills. It was just and- getting them by. Right. It wasn't a career. It was just a job. It was like any regular job. And then the pandemic hit. And then a lot of them lost their jobs. Granted, so most of them got unemployment and made more money. But that's not the sure. but it, but but some honestly some of these comedians they ended up having they lost their jobs they had to move home they they just right. didn't have that concrete thing. I know the pandemic's over, but I still, you know, say look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm saying like your physi- physiological needs is most important. You know, before you pursue any artistic path or your hobby, it's like focus is like your your shelter, your, your place, your, where you sleep. I'm reading. Okay. I'm just going to read it. It's like physiological age, like, which is the bottom, which is air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. We don't have to worry about reproduction. And then the, one <laughs> next, and then the next one is safety needs, personal security, employment, resources, health, property. The next one is love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. Yes. And then up top is esteem, respect, self-esteem, status, recognition. And then the next, and then the top one is self-actualization, desire to become the most, that one, what are the, that desire, sorry, it's like, oh yeah, desire to become the most that one can be. And I think that like when it comes to like stand-up comedy, that's like, should be on the top, you know, like it's not as important as your physiological needs or your safety mm. needs. You know, you got to even therapy, you know, there's I there's a comedian, yeah. Chappelle Lacey, very funny, brilliant guy, very nice guy, too. And he even took a break for comedy for his mental health. He was like, I need to work on myself. I, I highly believe like when comedy was taken away from me when the pandemic, I still had a job. I still had a roof over my head. I still had a good support system. I had my friends. I had my family that I would FaceTime. And and I still had my hobbies. I still worked out. I still went, you know, I would hike. I hiked a lot in 2020. Oh, my God. I, I hiking almost every weekend, you know? Same, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, at least my the taxes are going somewhere. And it's just me hiking <laughs> in California. But... But yeah, so I guess like my advice, it's like stand-up comedy obviously is important, but just remember there are things more important than stand-up. And so focus on uh, your physiological needs, your safety needs, and your your friends. Like when you have that strong core, then you could venture out like, all right, you know, let me focus on stand-up comedy. I mean, there would be times where I would put stand-up comedy on cruise control because I need to focus on my job. Or, or the time where, uh, when my dad got sick in the summer, my dad passed away. That's another story. Oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> yeah. to hear that. Yeah. But you know, it was like for a month where I was like, I, yeah, I'm not going to do comedy. <laughs> like, you know, you, yeah. you hold, so. Um, Dude, that's, that's really, it, it spoke to me. You're like a little Yemenese cherub with shiny <laughs> wings because, because I feel I have a full-time job as well. I am trying and trying to do comedy and have that be my thing. I, well, I kind of look like Cherise there and now, but um, if you, with, if you ordered her from wish, but I feel like I, the seed gets planted in my mind. And I think, should I try and just quit it all 
and go and invest in like full-time comedy? Would I be more successful? Will I accelerate my growth, et cetera? But to your point, right now, my job is helping put food on the table. It's helping me with those physiological needs to be right. able to be a support for my wife, for our two little kittens, and oh. also being able to allow us to have a nice life. Like We get to, sometimes if I don't want to buy clothes at Kohl's, I don't have to. I can upgrade, you know, to Old Navy sometimes, uh, or the Gap. I go. Yeah. I, I will buy. I will buy my denim, my jeans from Target, man, or some shirts. I love Target. Big fan. Big oh, fan of same. Target. Oh, same. <laughs> the Targ. Yeah, we got the Targ barge over here. Just yeah, yeah. in on the same. This, hey, this same. podcast was brought to you by Targ. <laughs> Target. <laughs> oh, dang. Yes. And uh, I hope so, because I am starting not to be able to afford their clothes. But no, I'm not because I have a job. So that but to that point, I feel like having those needs filled makes you the I think a better person. And it, it helped. You spoke to me directly in that. I know you're speaking to the listeners and viewers as well. But yeah. to me, it put me at ease a little bit because there's that constant struggle of should I do this? Should I just abandon everything? And I don't if, think I would ever. Yeah. And if you think it. about it, it's like the thing about comedy, your best jokes, you pull comedy from life itself, you know? So it's like, you need to live your life in order to pull better experiences for, and for your comedy to be better. I mean, listen, like I, I have a great job. I'm so grateful for my job. It's flexible. I work from home. Like I'm going to yeah, keep this job until whatever, until whenever, until they say, Hey, I'm at <laughs> choose what they give me the ultimate, but I'm keeping this job. I love it. And it's, and it's flexible yeah. enough for me to do what I want to do. Yeah. And yeah. And to the point where, uh, to the other uh, question or the feeling when you were saying like, um, oh, uh, like, oh, should I quit my job and pursue this full time? It's like, remember, comedy is only at night. You still have met all the, you still have these 40 hours a week to do, you know, yeah. and you got to make money. And it's like, that's why that job is so important because I have friends who, even me, like, when I first moved here, I was like, oh, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to uh, go back to accounting. Like I was, I was an idiot. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm just going to make, I was one of those guys. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make my big break. And yeah, I don't need to work accounting anymore. I genuinely yeah. thought that, but then six months later, savings, woo, credit card debt. Woo. <laughs> and then I'm like sitting there like, oh yeah. Like I would Postmates and like do like DoorDash delivery and I try to get the bonus, but I'll only pay for my like rent and other things, but I want to pay for other stuff, yeah. you know, cause yeah. life, life is expensive. California is expensive. So oh boy, you need, you need like a strong foundation or a strong, like, uh, what's the, what's the best, what's, just, what's the best way to this? No, I think foundation is yeah, good. A strong, strong foundation. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. You need that. Um, you need that bubbling, that babbling brook with that fresh water to supply mm -hmm. you with nourishment to hydrate. <laughs> yes, so yes. When you do go out and you hunt for those elk, uh, unless you're a vegetarian, when you hunt for those tofu, you're yeah. able to, to find it. And I love you're, that. You're I, love, I love these analogies. We're killing it. There is a, <laughs> yeah. one more piece of good advice. And then we could go back to horrible. We could start horrible advice is, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people get caught up with the age factor. Like uh, even me, like e literally yesterday, I compared myself to Pete Davidson. I'm like, dude, I'm not like, it's like, oh man, Pete Davidson is literally my age. He's only one month. I'm one month older than him. What the hell? Like, you know, you're, you're way hotter than Pete Davidson. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> hey, I'll take, first off, you're right. He is taller, but stuff, you are right. <laughs> But, but what I'm saying is like, it's success, but also it's like, no, yeah, it's, um, Bill Burr made it in his forties, fifties, you know, some people make it in their twenties. You're not late. You're not early. You're on time with your life. You're not late. You're not early. You're on time. Just Dude. enjoy the journey. Just post your content, post, be happy. Just, I'm, I'm alive. I'm fine. You know, 
Because we get caught up with comparing ourselves with a lot of people. You know, you just Wikipedia their age and then you compare yourself. And don't get lost in that. Oh, my God. I feel like somebody just took me on a picnic and opened up this basket and every <laughs> single item just had my name on it. Because I think about that's another thing that I've recently been <laughs> thinking about, too, and I've been battling because it's like, mm, Steph. You're getting up, Steffi Cakes. You're getting up there in age. You're becoming a rotten banana. Nobody's <laughs> going to want to peel you. And I think, oh man, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should just. No, no. And, and also another thing is remember, stand up comedy is is like it's a long game. It's this isn't a race. This is a marathon. Again, Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. He's my favorite. And he even like from his podcast, he was like, I was sleeping on a futon until I was 36 years old. And he didn't really like get his big break. And then finally, like he's now in his fifties and he's like, you know, bigger than, you know, one of the biggest comedians working today. And he's yeah. very, you know, very uh, respected in his scene and everywhere he goes. Uh, but he, he worked his ass off. He went through the trenches, but he worked hard and he kept his hand down and he kept, you know, write good jokes and then go back home and write better jokes, you know? Man, no, <laughs> no wiser words have been said on this Monday. This has been fantastic. Well, yeah. that's a that's a great nugget of advice to help us just rollerblade on into the bad advice that we're gonna about to <laughs> do. Let's do we'll it. Wi- we'll wind down with uh, maybe we'll do one or two questions. <clears throat> this first one, it's from Reddit from the advice column. It says, "I just turned twenty, and my father asked what I wanted for my B day." What should I ask for? You're 20? 20 years old. Um, oh, we're doing bad advice. Ask for. No, you, you can do good advice too. No, this is your episode. On okay. <laughs> no, do no. I want to I I give him bad advice, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. 20 years old. Uh, I'm overthinking this. I don't know. Ask him. No, it's okay. What, what did you get for your 20th birthday from your parents? Did you get something cool? Uh, my parents didn't really get me anything for my, we, we weren't really celebrating birthdays. But what did I get for my 20th birthday? I went, I was in Yemen for my 20th birthday. Yeah, I was in, yeah, I was 20. Yeah, I was turning 20 and my Dang. aunt made me a cake. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, it, made, it was very touchy. You know, they wrote, for, you know, and a halwa yagami like you know happy year you know happy year for you and uh yeah Aww. i i'm i don't know when it comes to birthdays i don't really care for gifts i just want to be around my close friends i just want to be around people i love like the 28th i was with ryan and my close friends and we went to uh disney world for yeah Magical. that my 27th, it was during the pandemic. It was just me and a couple of close friends that came over. 26, same thing. Just, hey, like this is like for my 29th, I'm just going to be like, hey, I'm going to be at this restaurant from this time to this time. I'm on through, you know, or everyone just come over to my place. We're just going to have a, you know, we're going to celebrate my birthday. You know, I, it doesn't, I don't really need gifts, but to back to your back to the 20 year old who's turning um honestly ask for a vacation overseas like take it be like hey take me to istanbul turkey get out of oh, yeah gobble get gobble nice get out of the gobble, gobble. <laughs> get out of the country ask for a ticket out of the country no, it i doesn't like that to, to a middle eastern country how about that uh, i like that so lebanon or somewhere <laughs> I like that. So you love to be around people you love. And then for this guy, you're asking him to just be in a different country away from every single person he loves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. With your dad, but whatever. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. With your, okay. That's <laughs> argue. I think, you know, to be honest with you, one of the best and most memorable trips that I ever took, I went, I, I just, a series of unfortunate events had transpired in the life de Satani. And I had lost my job. I had a really stinky girlfriend. And mm-hmm. uh, she we broke up with each other. And 
well, those were two catastrophic events in my 20 year old mind. So I ended up going to Italy. I have some cousins that still live there and they had a wedding. And so the two of them were getting married, not to each other, but um, I ended up going and I just traveled around Italy, backpacking with my youthful spry spirit. And yeah. I ended up Strong just back. a good back. Yep. A oh, young my just back. <laughs> my juicy lats, my yoked up lats. They're just yeah. No, it doesn't so doesn't tense up after after sitting down for too long. And so and yeah, and some people would prefer to backpack, but I rollerbladed through Italy, <laughs> and it was so good. I Turns out they had the roads for it, you know. <laughs> I just imagine somebody trying to rollerblade through the cobblestones of Naples and just eating it. Yeah, but, dude, like, yeah. I like these. Let's do it. Let's do another one. It's beautiful. All right, let's do one more. This one is, oh, okay. How to be less noticeable and intimidating. I thought it was always my social anxiety, but now I realize that people really do look, no, stare at me. It doesn't matter where I go what I wear, what my expression is, my hair, or anything, I always garner people's attention, and I don't like it. Even if they may have good intentions, my mind doesn't go that way. It's always negative thoughts. I also have trouble making acquaintances since people always say I look intimidating. Any tips? Is this a boy or a girl? Oh, good question. Because because uh, if it's a... Because usually... Like there, if it's intimidating, I'm thinking in a male sense, it's like he's tall, he's big, and he has a very serious look, you know, yeah. to make him less intimidating, just, I would say, you know, smile, you know, be like, hey, you know, like if someone tell for your advice, the next time someone says, uh, some like he's saying people are looking at me. So the next time someone looks at you, just do this. Hi, just do that. Just do the nod. Don't do the white person smile. This one. <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh i one of the, there's this one guy at my work <laughs> he's also white surprise but he he gives the smile where he's yeah it's it's a smile but it's not a smile just like yeah that. I, I hate that I mean, and yeah. i go ahead go ahead sorry yeah yeah no 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 i was just gonna say just the next time someone looks at you just smile or smile not just be like hey how's it going or just if Hi, how are you? And just keep go on about your day. Um, when a stranger, when you're passing by strangers, Ahmed, do you wave and smile or do you do the the white person smile? Because I find myself doing the white person smile and I hate it because I can't bring myself to just. Really... I always nod. I always do this. Oh, smart. Okay. I do. The, I always nod. I, I always do like, hey. You know, <laughs> not, not Hopefully it's not like a Heil with me. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, God. No, no. Just just like that. I could nod or like, like you do this. Oh, okay. You do this, like, up, like, stop or stop down, you know. Okay. I'm going to have to practice this because I'm going to Or a smile, you know, just like, hey. Hey. Okay. You know? I think show, I could do that. That's show those pearly whites to whoever, you know, to whoever asking that question. And if you're a girl... And you're intim people are intimidated by you. Um, same thing. Smile, just hi. You know, I guess that's the best way to be less intimidating. I mean, I think yeah. I think a, a a big factor of why uh, Ryan and I uh, we're able to get those, these really nice fan like our fan base is like we're not intimidating guys. We're very welcoming people. We have this warm energy that we give out and it, and it comes from our backgrounds. You know, I met his parents. I was like, that's why Ryan's the way he is. And same as my parents, very warm, welcoming people. Um, yes. yes. I love that. And you, you hit on two great points too. Cause you just looking at you, you might be a little intimidating. You're, you're yoked. <laughs> and, like I can tell you work out, but when you went on stage, the bot, so you mentioned body language, the little yeah, the that, body language. Yeah. You know, and the smile you did the little, the joke when the motorcycle passes you and you go, ah, and the body language instantly, I was clenched, but then I got unclenched. Cause I thought, wow, this is a guy that I feel like I could joke or pal around with. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. I'm your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I thought that was good. I think the other thing, the only other thing that I was thinking about is what are you wearing? Cause maybe if you're wearing a spiked collar and a shirt that says 
fuck off, then that might indicate. Like the anti-social social club. You're like, all right, dude. <laughs> I am yeah, sick of exactly. that shirt. Because so many people wear it. And it's like the anti social Everyone has that shirt. You're like, all right. <laughs> oh, the irony that it is yeah, now. It's because, so ironic. Yeah. It's so ironic. But so. Um, there is a, yeah, also like what you're wearing and your desk position. Um, yes. Yes. Wait, did you say desk? Desk position. D I S P O S S T I O N. Yeah, desk position or despacito. Um, <laughs> no, 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 suavecito. Okay, yeah, yeah, gotta be suavecito. Okay, can we do one more question? I want to, I, I like these. One more, just one more. Give it to okay, me. okay, perfect, perfect. I've got one more. Brace yourself. This one's a little bit longer than the last one, but not too much. Brace yourself. It says, in a serious relationship with my first cousin, but don't know how to tell my parents. I'm a 23 year old F. And recently got back into contact with my cousin, 27-year-old M. When, we're teena- when we were teenagers, we were already a thing for a little while, but nothing official or serious. Now, years later, we both realized this is what we actually want and started a serious relationship with each other. We're both financially independent and have a great time together. A part of our family already knows about us and is okay with us having a relationship. I'm talking mainly about his parents and his brother and sister, but my parents aren't as accepting and open-minded as his. I've had some issues with them before, and now I'm unsure how to bring this up to them. They seem kind of blind to the fact that we're making it really obvious. So any advice on how to best tell them or handle this situation? Okay. As a person coming from Arab culture, I listen, there is... Um, <laughs> There's lots of cultures where it's fine. Listen, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, I I actually didn't know what the Arab culture standards were, so I didn't know where you were going. So with it. yeah, no, in Yemen, like I remember being last time I was in Yemen, they'd be like, oh yeah, like he she's marrying his cousin or whatever. It's like a, it's like it's normal to marry a cousin. Okay, 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 uh, okay. Cool, cool. It's if you prove that <laughs> usually they do like a blood test or whatever, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. It's like a 23 and us just to see if there's overlap. I think it's like, I think, uh, um, I think like the best way to do it is like to just prove like medical science or whatever. It's like, you're fine. Like it's not harmful. Um, another (laughs) thing is, okay, let's go to the bad advice. You can to the girls, the 23 F girl, go to your parents and be like, listen, I'm on heroin. What? You're on heroin? <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, I can't believe it. Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm kidding. And then she's like, I'm I'm lying. I'm not on heroin. I'm dating my cousin. Oh, thank God. I thought you were on heroin. <laughs> I love I love that. That's get up, get him with the really bad fake news and then hit him with the real and then hit I'm him dating with real- my brother. What? <gasps> nope. Just the cousin. Just the cousin. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God you branched but, out a little farther on that tree. Yeah, the cousin thing, I listen, as a person that's coming from Arab culture, I get it. I mean, I'm all for it. Hey, love is love. You do you. Um, yeah, yeah. And if he is the guy that you like today and all that, you know, I don't know what's that. Hey, look at you, man. So, per- so. Uh, is it progressive? I'm not sure if it's progressive or regressive, but either way, it's accepting. And open that's minded. what I think. Accepting. Open mi- yeah, open-minded. Open. And I feel, I feel, you know what? I may or may not have had a crush on a cousin when I was in my teenage years. And who who's to say? But we go. didn't pursue things because they rejected me. But, you know... If that hadn't, if I had been, if I had had your physique, then maybe things would have been different. And maybe yeah. I would have had a different life. Maybe I would have been a famous comedian. I would have been the cousin marrying comedian. That would have been my shtick. The cousin marrying comedian. <laughs> oh my God, that's but, funny. But I went as far away as I possibly could and went to the south, uh, southern equator and, uh, or south side of the equator. There's only one equator. Um, mm-hmm. that's damn, that'd be a really cool wrestling name too. I'm not a wrestling fan, but if there was a wrestler called the equator. Then that would be just. Oh, so just, I feel yeah, it just I split everything down the middle. 
Right, right. He'd have like the longitude smash. Oh the, my God! Wow. The latitude, the latitude tussle, whatever. He'd do the Western Hemi, just <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, he jumps from the South Pole and smacks. <laughs> 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 oh god and that was the arctic cap on all of the <laughs> puns so <laughs> i think we can i think we've broken the ice plenty and plenty. i feel like this is this is a great this is a great yeah. well maybe not global warming but yeah. warming of of two spirits and thank you ahmed we've yeah, we've reached the end so. of the podcast by the way yeah yeah, it's been it's been about an hour but dude thank you so much for having me this was lots of fun and i gotta say it's been an honor because you had some pretty really big comedians and i'm like i'm i'm like i'm i'm a little you know i'm not that big of a name but you know the fact that you had me along with these other people other bigger name comedians it's an honor you know Dude, 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 it is, uh, the honor is all mine, because you have, it was so cool getting to see you perform live, and I will tell you this, just topping off the the little ice cream Sunday, or ice cream Wednesday, because it was yeah. Wednesday night that I got to see you guys, but- uh, Thursday night, Thursday I, night. There we go, Thursday, I, it's Wednesday somewhere, but- yeah. I feel that I told my wife, I said, that's a comedy community that I want to be a part of. Like, that's who I want to do comedy for. And those are the types of people that I would like to do comedy with. I appreciate that. Yeah, they're great. They're really good. Yeah. They're mostly Ryan's fans, but, you know, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just hitch on the coattails of Ryan. Yeah, I, yeah. That's I'm just like, Wee! <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. I, I dare I disagree with that because I feel like <laughs> one you've worked up those comedy muscles to a spot where nobody can say ish about you being just a TikTok star or oh got, yeah definitely not no I'm a, I'm a know, comedian that posts TikToks that's a stand-up comedian that posts TikToks that's and how I feel and you're phenomenal and I, and, I I, and it was that. yeah and I was a little I was nervous to to speak with you actually what? my wife was like my wife was like go on up go on up to him go 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 bitch and finally i got i got to go the- oh my god you didn't have to i why would you be nervous dude the fact that people would be nervous to come talk to me blows my mind that's crazy to me i was I, yeah i was a little nervous well you're a little intimidating if you had given me a head nod or were like i hey, have the biggest not- smile ever <laughs> <laughs> i smile I, at I can- everyone I could tell that your gums worked out. You're just so strong, just flexing all those mouth <laughs> muscles. You're, but yeah, no, yeah. I I will leave this last detail besides the fact that it was an honor. And then I'll ask you where people can follow you, what you've got going yeah, on, all the sure. plugs. The, I, I will say this. I almost literally pissed my pants at your guys' show because my wife and I were trying to run errands. We were doing all these things. And I said, you know what? I will pee when I get to the place. We were 10 minutes early, but it was packed in the parking lot because so many people were dying to see you guys. And so we parked way far away. We were right on time. And then that goddamn glorious Ryan, he ended up getting us a reserved VIP front table. And when we gave the name, they're like, oh, you'll have to follow us right here. And it was so sweet of him. Yeah. But I didn't get to go pee and I got crammed into the the front section and there was no way of me getting out so it was fine and manageable at first but then i think after tristan went on he was great and then you went on and i started to feel it and i'm laughing so hard that my abs are just crunching my bladder and it's like (laughs) deep belly laughs and i'm like oh shit i don't know if i'm gonna make it and then ryan goes on and at that point i don't know why but i was dumb and i kept chugging well, not chugging, but I drank my two drinks that yeah. I had to and water to hydrate. And it was filling up to the tippy top. And I felt like Mount Steph Suvius, just ready to blow, but from my <laughs> right, right. And And at that point, I was, I hope Ryan didn't feel offended because I was trying not to laugh at some of his last jokes because I was like, if I laugh, it's going to squirt out, man. It's going <laughs> to squirt out. So then at the very end afterwards, I was like, thank you the lord thank every god that is in existence because i was 
I was like an old man hunched over walking to the bathroom like this because if I had stood up straight, it would have stretched out and then I would have peed yourself have erupted <laughs> myself. Dude, you so, probably had the most the longest piss of your life. Oh my god, I timed it. Two minutes and forty seven seconds. Wow. Yeah, my dude. my record yeah. is one minute and twenty four seconds. Oh my gosh. That I lied. I don't know how long it was. No, I, I, I legit like... had a, a, a pit that was longer than a minute. It was like a minute and 20 something seconds. That I, is... I, I, I'm not lying. Like it was, I, I was, it was like, I, I was driving on the road and I was looking for some, whatever. It's a long story. No, Damn. I... <laughs> <laughs> if it was two I minutes, you may have peed. Impressed. I think you may have peed longer than me because I don't think I've ever peed longer than a minute, but it was a good long. I think I got to like five stories on Instagram because I obviously I, I fiddle while I piddle, but it it was a long time. But anyway, regardless to say, it was an honor to have you on the pod. And I also wanted for all the listeners and viewers, where can people follow you? What have you got going on? What oh, you like yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, So I will be in um, San Francisco at December 12th through hold on let me pull this up december yeah 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 so december 9th yeah december 9th through 12th like that i uh, will be in san nice. francisco that weekend so follow me on tiktok uh for videos but follow me on instagram to stay in touch of to know when i was one of my students. oh no let me see let me see if this works ah there it is I'm at- <laughs> beautiful i at love's right but yeah i <laughs> have yeah. But just to stay in touch uh, or to stay updated on when my shows are, if you're in San Francisco, hit me up. So I'll let you know when my shows are. Or if, and I'm, I'm performing in Los Angeles every week, performing uh, nice. this Wednesday at the Hollywood Improv. And then my friend Noah, I'm going to be performing this Friday for my friend Noah at Loft. Uh, he's doing his live taping and I'm performing both spots. So, um, yeah, follow me on Instagram, Ahmed Loves Bread. Uh, let me know what you think of the podcast, Stefan. This was fun. This, this was so much fun. I this was literally one of the best podcasts I've been on. Like you do your research, your good vibes, and it's fun. And I love the ending segment. So it's really good. This is really fun. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll okay. I just wanted to say one more thing. <laughs> I go. feel like if you haven't done a pod, you should do a podcast because every podcast I've heard you on. You are so funny. And one of the things that pisses me off about my podcast is it's me and surprise guest, and I don't know if they're gonna bring the funny. You definitely did. It Dude, was you brought you the my funny. Money. Those puns, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, but, I, I, I genuinely you... want to start a podcast. I I need to. I I used to have one, and then I and then it was too much work. But I might if I end up doing a podcast, it's just gonna be me by myself. Just, I'm gonna like right now I'm working on my own merch, but my next nice. like like uh, endeavor or <laughs> investment is to keep saving money and then obviously like just start my own podcast. I want to call it Monday Fun Day. It's gonna be dropped every Monday, and it's just me in front of a <laughs> in front of the camera, it's similar to, like how the Delia Chris Delia's podcast. But yeah, I'm just gonna be talking about whatever. So, hey guys, Stefan again post episode Steph and I am here to just congratulate you for making it all the way through you finished you did it I don't know if you had to close your eyes and pretend I was someone else but you're here and I am so proud of you thank you so much if you haven't yet follow me on Instagram uh TikTok as Satani comedy advice podcast subscribe leave a review comment tell a friend see me live at the house of comedy december 14th trash or treasure and also follow ahmed show him some support show him some love see him live all that good stuff because he is an absolute gem he's a sapphire of a person and that's all guys i hope you have the most pleasant thanksgiving well, I hope you did because this is recorded post. But hey, you know what? It's never too early to get ahead of next year's Thanksgiving. So uh...
that's the sound that I made after I had a big old helping of turkey because the tryptophan just kind of trips you up and makes you fall asleep. Love you guys so much and get ready for that smooch right on the gooch. Love you.